a relatively straightforward assessment statement. So for the chain reaction, for example, if a neutron hits a fissionable nucleus, it'll break up, release energy, and probably more neutrons. These neutrons can then repeat the process when they hit more fissionable nuclei, and that's called a chain reaction. Not a chain reaction, well, something interrupts that process, and the fission cannot continue. So looking at definitions, chain reaction, I couldn't find one in the IB book, but this is the best I could do. A nuclear reaction that causes one or more nuclear reactions, self-sustaining. And the idea of critical mass is needed. That's the smallest mass of fuel needed for a chain reaction. If you don't have enough fuel, and it's not just mass, it's density, temperature, composition, but the IB is only going to really ask you about mass. If you don't have that correct, you're not going to get your chain reaction. So your nuclear power station will just power down or your bomb won't go off. And the process does not have to be so sedate that just one neutron causes another uranium and another one. It can go 1 to 3 to 9 to 27. And don't forget, each of these fissions releases a lot of energy. So that's the principle of a nuclear bomb. So back to the nuclear reactor. What can you do with all those excess neutrons that you've got from your chain reaction and all this uranium-238 that you have? Remember, it's only the 235 that's fissionable. Well, you can stick the 238 in the reactor. It will absorb one neutron to turn into uranium-239 and then keep an eye on this other neutron. It will undergo beta decay, turning a neutron into a proton you've just made Neptunium. Now, who cares? Well, keep your eye on this other neutron as that also undergoes beta decay. And now you've made plutonium. Ah, plutonium. You can use that as fuel for the reactor or to make nuclear bombs. So this is a breeder reactor. Excess neutrons turn unfissionable uranium-238 into 239 and then that decays into fissionable plutonium-239. The everyday running of the reactor produces more reactor fuel. No wonder this is so tempting for the nuclear industry. You can make, in some cases, more fuel than you actually use. Interesting, eh?